Today, the second part of my short series about B-roll footage. B-roll footage is the, what I like to call the also ran footage, the footage that is also captured during a day's filming. Vital for good storytelling. In this video, I'm gonna give more examples of where I felt that the B-roll footage that I had have used in my programs have really made the difference. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to share with you what equipment I used to get such great footage. I'm Andrew Cynthia White, and I'm a global adventure travel filmmaker. Follow along as I share my hard-learned lessons in storytelling, videography, and photography. Scared of scared of pressing of the buttons here in case it accidentally shoots a torpedo and sinks the Jeremiah O'Brien. Forgive me for a moment while I indulge my love of ships. The Jeremiah O'Brien has an even more illustrious history. She is a Liberty ship, a rare survivor of the 6,939 ship armada that stormed the Normandy beaches on D-Day in 1944. Amazingly, she is kept in ocean-going condition and returned to France on the 50th anniversary of the D-Day landings, the only large vessel from the original landings to return. The ship footage was really an afterthought. We were in San Francisco, we were visiting a place in San Francisco where they build these trucks that I was about to drive, and we thought we would do some touristy things, and the ship was so just so enchanting, I love ships, and could be photographed so well, the light was nice, I had the right equipment, so I gathered a whole lot of B-roll footage, and it turns out to be a nice, short, nice little diversion from the main story. It's quick, and it just, changes the pace of the video in terms of the story telling. A little diversion sometimes helps, as long as it doesn't take the focus too much away from the main story, a little diversion is good. During the trip through the US, and that particular one, I shot a lot of material that, because the scenery was interesting, the road trip was nice, although quite uninteresting because it was just, you know, asphalt, so we weren't going off off the beaten path, we weren't going off grid or anything special like that. It was just a nice trip and a fairly ordinary camping spot. But it turned out to be a very nice music montage. Now in storytelling it's always a great idea to vary the pace. So if, you're, if it's a very um, strong story structure and you need some light relief or you need to change, I like to call it break state. Your audience is feeling a certain way, is gathering the story, and a, and a break state means change of pace, change of scene, change of feeling and emotion. In this particular situation, I used a piece of music. We were out in the country. It was a nice piece of library music that I found that was, was just had a nice, just a nice feel about it, and it was suited to a road trip. This sequence is 100% B-roll. Death Valley. Down every golden road, paved in fallen souls. People strive and struggle for their dreams. It's a sordid, sour game, fools and foul are all in play. Fixes in, we're heading up this street. When you're broken down, far away, forsaken towns Weary by the weak link in your chain One whimper or a sound, the better days are surely crowned Better hold your hope, hold tighter on the rain Under skies full of fire Burning embers fall instead of rain See me there, I aspire Hanging on to all my feeling veins We are sold in the fabled tales of old Bow your heads, get on your knees and pray While calling out his name Turn his sin and soul to sing You know trouble's sure to find and cause pain 
In this example, the B-roll footage is actually used as an opening music montage to a new episode. Now, you'll notice the music that I've used it presents the, the mood, but so do the sound effects. So the sound effects were captured at the time as separate. The, 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 the cattle in the background, the, there's a voice, there's some there's a sheep herders, you can hear their voices. That's was recorded separately. I don't even think I was filming them. So again, this is now a, a combination of me gathering B-roll footage, B-roll sound, and compiling a sequence to uh, open an episode. I want you to look specifically though at the lenses that I was using during the sequence. See if you can pick out a common way I was shooting. And then we'll talk about the equipment that I used. B-roll footage is there to add texture, to add flavor, to add detail. Rarely do lots of wide shots as is B-roll footage. So I mean, for example, if you had an action camera on the front of a bike, yeah, you could use a piece of that, a B -roll, piece of that as B-roll footage, but with wide shots, there's so little detail. You, you know, if it's, a, if it's just a mounted on the front of a vehicle going over a track, what is it saying to your audience? It's saying to them, oh, you're on the track, uh, and the track is rough, and the sky is blue. What else is it actually, what, what other information is it actually giving to your audience? And the answer is very little. If you had a wide shot of a town or a city, what information is it giving to your audience? City? Sunny? Not much else. And there's a very good chance that shots like that are going to be used in your narrative anyway. But you'll have establishing shots, um, so your audience will understand the position, location. You'll have have used those already. So for B-roll, they're not great for B-roll because a, you, you can use them for B-roll, but you've got to keep them short. You can't have, you know, I see I see a lot of drone shots used as B-roll, but unless that drone shot is fantastic and presenting the information to the viewer that is rich and full and there's lots of it again you can't run them for long sequences because they become tedious every shot of a video should be presenting the a, 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 a certain amount of information to your audience and the soundtrack that goes with it presents the emotion in other words how the audience is meant to feel. So that's why I go on and on about when gathering B-roll, it's absolutely vital that you get B-roll sound. We'll talk about that first. Microphones like this are very, very good. This is a Sennheiser. You'll see the details below in the video description. Um, it's a long rifle microphone designed for general audio, it's very good for voice if the voice is reasonably close to it. Very good for ambience, but very good specifically for the sound of an animal, a bird sound, the particular V8 engine roar, or something like that. Full ambient sounds, much better to use a stereo microphone because it gives volume. All right. But for B-roll footage, B-roll shooting, specifically shooting for B-roll, a microphone such as this is a very good choice. In terms of lenses and cameras, the best B-roll is getting close to your subject. 
Now a lens such as this is, I use this a lot for B-roll, it's a 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. Being wide angle zoom, it means that I have to get close to my subject. And when I say close, very close. Because if, that's what's so beautiful about a lens with a wide opening, such as 2.8, is that you can throw the background out of focus and the eye, the audience's eye, immediately latches onto the piece that you're trying to, that you're focusing on. So in other words, you can have quite a lot of image in the frame, but only small part of it in focus and the eye catches that small part that's in focus and now it's a very interesting perspective because our eyes don't normally see that we're now seeing it blown up or we're seeing it in really really clear there's, there's something about this kind of of b-roll capturing this kind of b-roll with a wide angle lens getting in really close and when I say really close I'm talking I'm talking close. I'm talking that close. Literally talking this close to your subject matter. The alternative to a wide angle lens is a telephoto lens. In other words, your subject is far away, but you're bringing it close. So again, get close. So you might not be this close because obviously telephoto lens, you're magnifying the image. But what I'm saying is fill the frame, make it rich. Again, using large apertures mean that you can separate the focus where your subject matter is in focus and the background is out of focus. The effect of that on your audience is that your audience homes in on a very simple image. Because if you think about a wide image. There's lots of data. So what does your audience focus on? Nothing specific. Nothing specific. The moment you want your audience to focus on and see something specific, you've got to get in close. And the best way of getting in close, wide angle zoom, getting in very, very close and opening the lens up so the background is out of focus. Or a telephoto lens, you don't have to get as physically close to the subject, but still do the same thing. Fill the frame using wide apertures. And again, you can, as a filmmaker, decide on what you want your audience to see. And they will see that specific thing and nothing else. And that is the beauty of this shooting B-roll with this kind of camera. In the previous scene, you saw the opening I was using there, a Canon 5D Mark Two that was filmed in 2012, that particular scene, and I was using the standard lens, which is a rather nice, uh, was a 24 to 105 f4, if I remember correctly, and when it zoomed in, it gave a reasonable, um, and I opened it up all the way to f4, and it gave a, a nice look, a really nice look to those scenes. So I'm not using very highly specialized equipment. I'm just use, I'm using good equipment, but I am just taking advantage of uh, the, the wide aperture and getting in close to my subjects. Thank you for watching the next video in this series, uh, the final one on this mini series about B-roll. I'm going to again, uh, show you how to apply your mind when out there filming how do you find the b-roll what do you do to actually you know your eyes are scanning around you're looking for that detail that I've spoken of how do you go about doing that join me next time